We have one woman who I will always see as a queen of the tracks. She has won a number of national championships, including a gold medal in 1996 in the 400 meters, gold medal in 200 meters and 400 meter in 1998, and gold medal again in 1999 and 2001 in the 400 meter. And at the 1987 All-Africa Games in Nairobi, Kenya, she won the silver medal in the 200 meter. In 1995, at the All-Africa Games in Harare, she won the silver in the 400 meter. And at the 1999 Games in Johannesburg, she won a gold medal in the 400 meter. At the 1996 Summer Olympics, she won a bronze medal in the 400 meter in a personal best, an African record of 49.1 seconds, which is the current 12th fastest of all time. Now we've got Chief Falila Togunkoya, Omotayo, MON, a Nigerian former track and field athlete. She's an Olympian and one of Nigeria's most decorated track and field queen. Good to have you with us, ma. Good morning. Now, we regard you as a legend on the tracks, and of course, you always be a legend. Was it easy for you to switch, uh, because I found a little bit that you, you were interested in table tennis, was it easy for you to switch from tennis to going to the tracks? And I, did, I think uh, for me it was easy, but for the two coaches, for the table tennis coach, it was not easy for him, because mm. he said, I tried to pick a track and field. Nice. You know, before coming on air, I, I watched the 1996 Olympic Women's 4x400 meter relay. It was a nostalgic moment, and uh, we finished with a silver medal. You gave it a fight, but it seemed like you were in a bit of pain. I, I, I stand to be corrected. We would like to know what exactly happened. Yeah, but because uh, I, I know, no, no, 400 meters is not an easy race. But if you look at the race, our turn leg was a little bit not fast as we, you know, it's supposed to be. Mm. So the, the, the gap alone for me to be able to catch up, you know. And I didn't know that even the duo I was, you know, was charging too. So the silver, you know, we could if it can go to us, you know, can it be silver? Mm. Now, rumor has it that in that uh, particular event that you were pregnant when we won a medal. Would you want to clear the air? No, I was not there because I had my son. Uh, I had my son almost three years. I was not. I was not. Oh, nice. Now, your parents, how supportive were they when you told them that you wanted to be an athlete? Uh, my mom was worried because I was born as a premature. But my dad, when I talked to my mom, uh, my mom was uh, like, okay, that was. But my dad told her that maybe this is the part God has chosen for her. And then the only thing she did was for her to, to not pray for me. So that's exactly what she did. And you know, the best of it. Now, you are the first Nigerian multi-Olympic medalist. How does this make you feel? I uh, thought was a good feeling, you know. But going to Atlanta, you know, my goal was to, you know, to win the gold, pick up, bronze. I, w I wanted to be on that better table, you know. Oh. So, but for me to be the first, even with that competition, I was the first one that won the medal. That is when everybody started believing that, I, oh, so possible. So, and then to come home with another, another stage, but make me feel, you know, you know, whatever in life, you just have to be very grateful because I was injury free, I was in shape. Some people want to go to that the same competition because of injury. They couldn't make it, but I made it. So I was very, very good. Mm. Looking at the athletes we have today, do you think we have what it takes to challenge for uh, top medals at major championships? We do. Nigeria has so much talent. We are good. I think if we just manage our, our athletes very well, because this is what we have to manage ourselves. Even our coaches have to manage them because no athlete wants to, wants to train hard because the training is tough. So we just have to manage it. See, Nigeria manage athletes very well. If you have been going to Olympics for a long time, you know, when Peter won, the, won his medal, and then the four by one sport, this is the men's rule. You know, that means that as a talent in this country, it's just the way we are managing it. If we manage it very, very well, I think that uh, we can win more medals. Because if you look at 96, 97, 98, Nigeria have about four, 400 runners in a, in a golden league. This is now down the lane. Mm. 
We have four people that we have been investing together in eight main tracks. We give Nigeria four athletes. Yeah. So, uh, myself, Patrick Moore, Charity, and this, they are there, right there. And three other ones that still running 50 seconds. So, I think if we manage all the athletes in Nigeria, both from, you know, athletics, you know, to wrestling, to basketball, you know, I think that we are going to be okay because we have been doing well in the past. What is what happened to us? And that is the pressure we need to ask ourselves. Very true. So I was still going to blame this on poor management. Would that be the reason why we don't seem to have the fire any longer to fight for um, the top prize? Yeah, you know, some people do manage themselves. Some federation manage themselves very well. Some mm. federation do. But we can't leave it all for them to do. Mm. But, uh, you know, the, the old one, the new one has to look at the old one that these people have done it. This is how they have been treated very well. And then when you talk to the upcoming one, you see their mind, you know, that, oh, I want to be better. If you can support all the clubs in Europe, but they are not even giving you a damn out of whatever they are making because they are doing something very well. We need to look in the world and manage our own very well. So. Now, the, the Federation, do you think they are doing enough to revive the sport and also encourage the younger ones so as to keep the fire burning? Because it, it, some people are of the opinion that grassroots sports is gradually dying in the country. But is the Federation doing enough? You can't look at the Federation because you have to represent your school, your state, your local government, and your state before you can go and represent Nigeria. So if you want the federation to do everything, it's not going to work. Because when I was growing up or when I was young athlete, it was on my stage that uh, Nigeria knows that uh, I can run. I can. I showed them I can run. I was able to represent Nigeria. But if you want to leave everything for federation, it's not going to work. Wow. Uh, but what was different between the athletes that we had back then compared to the ones we have now? I think you see when you look at the, the when we were young, we were we go to all Nigeria as if I said junior athletes. Grassroot is very, very important because the impact, the knowledge, the training and the mental toughness you impart on them from the early age, that is what's gonna happen. But if you look at people that they just go to come. Maybe let me go and do with this thing. I can do a lifter. Maybe I can do a lifter. Oh, maybe. And you are over 20. You are still celebrating that uh, you don't even know the sport you want to do. But, but because you decided that let me go and be a sports person. You have to be something from age of 8, age of 10. So, but before you reach 20, you are already a world champion and a lifting champion. That is why we are hammering for the grassroots. Is the, is the right thing to do. Mm. You, sport you match all of us. That's one thing that you know of us. And today we don't manage it very well. That you know, we, we continue to complain about how, why are we not doing very well. Of course, uh, sport is all about unity, and this is one thing that unites uh, both male and female. But staying with the female now, um, talking about ladies in sports, there has been more focus on male sports than the female. It, it feels like male sports has been more domineering. What can we do to change the narrative? Uh, but if you look at Nigeria, female are one more mother than even the male. I agree. <laughs> uh, but the, the, the reason why is that is because the way that we are promoting ourselves. When I was young, footballers, basketballers, volleyballers, partners, with all of us, we are all staying against women together. We, they have come and go for us. We, you know, we go to the same place to eat. We go to the same, you know, we stay in the same place. But now, this one is doing, you know, his or her own. So that is the, the main problem. Now we have to make everybody be one and then treat everybody equally. And we see more female athletes coming out to come and you know. And they should not put all these full medal things on. Look at that. You look like a man. Uh, look at this one. This one uh, this thing, you know, all those uh, you know, language, it's not going to help. 
that in us, it's not going to help. It's just has to make everybody as one. And then you see more similar things coming out, and then you need to celebrate the one that done very well. So you will see that at the end of the day, it's the one one. I would like to thank you very much. But as you go, uh, what's your advice to that young athlete out there who looks up uh, to you and wants to be like you and also achieve greatness? Uh, what I want to tell them is that uh, it's, not, it's not going to be easy. They are not going to give it to you. Sport is not like an exam. You are doing it in your class. You know, everybody is looking at you. It's something that the whole world is going to look at you and they're going to ask you what happened when you don't do very well. As long as you hold your head high, whatever that's going on around you, you don't let it affect you. And then you work very hard at it. The sky is the limit. Don't let anybody pull you down. Wow. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome.